afternoon, everyone. My name is Karen Anderson, and I'm Director of Supporting Success for Children with Hearing Loss. And I am so glad that you are joining us for the April workshop or webinar uh, that's going to be all about the Interact Streamer Automated Speech-to-Text Captioning and how it can be used in the schools. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm very excited to discuss this with you. Interact Streamer is a classroom accommodation, and we recognize that at this point, most students with hearing loss are fully included in the general ed setting. They are there with their class peers in their neighborhood schools, being educated within the inclusive classroom. Unfortunately, the hearing devices they use, whether they're the hearing aids or cochlear implants or our FM or DM hearing assistance technology, it just does not restore normal hearing. They just do not hear as loudly as their typically hearing peers, nor it's, it's typical for them to not hear all of the speech sounds as clearly as their typically hearing peers. So that means they have to always be working harder to listen and to truly, truly grasp what it is the teacher is trying to say and figuring out each of those words, whether in context or drawing on their vocabulary, they're always working harder to listen. And then this leaves fewer cognitive resources for them to understand or comprehend what the teacher's saying, much less put it into short-term short memory, excuse me. So when we think about the expectations moving from grade to grade, obviously as the children move from one grade to another, the vocabulary expectations are going to increase. The content vocabulary is going to increase. The amount of the words that are learned every day, every week, every month, is much greater from year to year to year. And students who are deaf or hard of hearing, especially those who are using their listening for learning, have a really difficult time keeping up with the vocabulary demands, again, because they don't hear the words as loudly or clearly as their peers, even with our best amplification devices. So it really is a challenge for them to keep up. And it's not unusual then to see students have increasing gaps in academics over time to, due to this issue. It's not unusual at this point for our students who are hard of hearing, many of them entering schools with average or a little bit low average abilities in terms of language for kindergarten and then first grade. Second grade, we often start to see some issues. By third grade, they are, tend to be more behind in reading. And when they're at the point where they read to learn versus learn to read, then it really is a race to keep up with the vocabulary. So it isn't surprising that they de develop these vocabulary gaps over time because of this lack of access, this lack of full access to what it is the teacher is saying and their class peers are saying. I always like to share this story with you and it's going, going, to, appear, going to appear in the yellow box. And what you'll see is that the words and the letters, the lettering, the spelling of the words has been changed to reflect what it's like to listen with about a 25 decibel hearing loss, which would be considered a fairly good hearing aid fitting for most children with hearing loss. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the line and then I'll tell you what it really says. Once upon a time, a city mouse went to visit a country mouse. The country mouse lived in a field. He was glad to see his city friend. The two mice ran about the field and played until noon. So this is just an example of what I was talking about when I mentioned that students with, who are hard of hearing typically don't catch all of the speech sounds as loudly as their class peers. So missing endings and those unemphasized words of speech can really be challenging for them. The Americans with Disabilities Act 
specifies that schools must ensure that communication of students with hearing loss is as effective as it is for peers, thus affording them an equal opportunity to reach the same level of achievement as that provided to others. This is a really tall order when we remember that hearing devices cannot and do not level the playing field. They certainly are very important for students to use and we like to make sure that they have optimal hearing throughout their school day, absolutely. But there's always a listening gap for our hard of hearing students. And that's where the ADA comes in and really looking at what's going to level the playing field for these students. So the ADA says that in order to level, level the playing field, students need to be provided uh, auxiliary aids and services. And auxiliary aids can be sign language interpreters, it can be these FM, DM, hearing assistance technology devices, and also captioning. All of these are included as auxiliary aids to level the playing field for these students with hearing loss. So Interact Streamer can be used as a classroom accommodation for this purpose of leveling the playing field for access. Although some students use it as a primary accommodation where they would be looking mainly at the text as the teacher is talking. Mostly, Interact Streamer captioning is used as a secondary accommodation, meaning the students who are hard of hearing are watching what the teacher or their class peers are saying, they're using their listening skills and their hearing devices, and they're really trying to listen as well as possible. But for all of those times when they miss a piece of a word or miss a phrase or just didn't quite get what that whole sentence was about, streamer captioning allows them the opportunity to look down quickly onto some kind of a media device there on their desk or in their hand and then see quickly what was said in print and then pop their eyes right back up and continue watching the speaker. It also can facilitate transition, and we know that transition services are required for those kids who have IEPs starting no later than age 14. And unfortunately, one of the things we know about the population of persons who are deaf or hard of hearing is that about half of them are either unemployed or underemployed. And also that the greater amount of education and training they have, the greater amount of employability they have. So the transition plans are really in place to try and maximize that employability after school. And it should include this preparation for post-secondary programs, preparing for employment, and increasing the student's understanding of which accommodations they require to function and then provide them with the opportunity to, to try different accommodations and understand the differences in the, the accommodations so that they too can understand how well they communicate with the various accommodations. And then how to appropriately request appropriate accommodations. So a trial with Streamer can really further a student's transition goals. So here we are in the middle of April toward the end of the school year in the U.S. And in many cases, uh, school staff and parents and students are thinking about what, what can I do next year to make it so that I, it's not as hard as it was this year? Or what can I try next year that will help me prepare for when I graduate and go on to a higher education? So today's webinar is going to answer your questions about how Streamer works. You're gonna experience it for yourself. Right now, you can see the scrolling captioning underneath the PowerPoint slides, and you're seeing Streamer at work and you're going to get information that's going to help you understand whether Streamer could be a good fit for your student and also what it's going to take to give it a try. 
and we really, really value having people consider trying Streamer with students. Just don't go out and buy it. <laughs> we want you to try it. No accommodation is a good fit for any particular student. That's why it's so important to let them try different accommodations. Also, we need to keep in mind that as we're captioning, the people who are speaking are the ones whose, whose content, whose voices are being captioned. So those people who have clearer speaking voices and don't clutter up their speech as much are going to have much more accurate captions than those that clutter up their speech more. Just wanted to say that there, there's some variability, but as you go through and you listen to the webinar, you'll see that in general, the accuracy is about 95% or better. Depends on the speaker, but that's where we're at. And it's very exciting to have an automated captioning technology that is this good, which means it's also very appropriate to try in a classroom setting. So I am very pleased that Supporting Success for Children with Hearing Loss is partnering with Auditory Sciences and Robert Palmquist, who is the developer of Streamer. And Robert is gonna go ahead and bring us through the demonstrations and take, take over the presentation from here. I'll come back on at the very end and uh, Together, we're going to make sure your questions are answered either during the webinar or by email after the webinar. So, Rob, take it away. Thanks, Karen. Let me uh, turn my microphone on a little bit. Um, let's see, are you able to hear me, Karen? Yes, I, yes, I am, Rob. Okay, good. All right, so I think we're all set. And uh, I'm gonna take you through uh, how Streamer gets used um, in a classroom. And in particular, I'm gonna show you how you can use it for free. So those of you that stick around till the end of the webinar, you'll be able to uh, get a login account and you'll be able to give it a try for free and do that uh, immediately right away. So what you are seeing right now is Streamer. Let me make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is increase the font size so you can read it a little bit easier. And this is what a student can obviously do in the classroom as well. The ability to increase that font size to something that's comfortable for them in order to be able to read what's being presented to the student. Now, as Karen mentioned, right now there is nobody typing in the background here. Uh, this is not a person that's typing this captioning. This is all being done automatically through this website. You do not need to install any software onto your device, whatever device you are using. All you do is go to a website, and when the student does that, they'll be able to view a captioning of what's being said. So uh, quite simple to use the uh, system. And let's go into a little more detail. I'm gonna jump back into these PowerPoint slides and show you a little bit more detail of uh, how Streamer works. Let me uh, scroll this up a little bit. There you go, so you can see my captioning at the same time underneath. Um, I do like starting out these presentations by giving a little bit of credit uh, to the uh, US Marine Corps that helped us develop this system. And so they provided a significant uh, amount of funding in order to make this happen. We initially started working with them on uh, foreign theater operations. So working, for example, in the Middle East to be able to uh, speak Arabic to the local populace. As a result of that success, they then came back to us and said, we really have an issue with our returning warfighters. It's very common for these warfighters to have hearing loss. And certainly uh, ear protection is provided to the Marines, but the reality is if they are wearing that hearing protection, they lose what they call situational awareness. They cannot hear footsteps approaching behind them. So unfortunately, the hearing protection is commonly not worn and what can happen is a 10 second uh, volley of machine gun fire that happens right next to their eardrum results in a lifetime of permanent hearing loss. And so the percentage of Marines coming back with hearing loss is absolutely staggering. And we were very honored to be able to uh, work with the Marine Corps to help support uh, these individuals. And so again, I, I like giving a little bit of credit uh, to the Marine Corps because they did make all this possible. As a result of our working with the Marine Corps and the military, everything that we're doing is completely secure. 
that was designed into the system from the very beginning. This is not an afterthought where all of a sudden people now are talking about security with Amazon and Facebook listening in on the captionings. Uh, Microsoft does the same thing. They pay people to listen in on the conversations that are occurring. In our case, we have the exact opposite approach. Everything is totally encrypted. Everything is completely secure. You alone control all access to your captioning room into the captioning system. So a very different philosophy than what you're seeing with the big players out there in terms of security and privacy. So what is Streamer? Just uh, in a very simple sense, what it is is a automated captioning and translation system. Right now here, we're just displaying everything in English, but if you only spoke Russian or Arabic or Spanish or something like that, whatever I'm saying could be presented to you in your native language and you would hear it spoken aloud in your native language. And when you respond by saying something again in your native language, I would hear it in English. So we provide both captioning and translation. Again, it's a website that you go to. In the past with our software, you had to go through software installation, which can be difficult for teachers. Um, they tend to lock down the computers a little bit, so you have to go find somebody who can do the install for you and any upgrades, and it's just a hassle. So we got rid of that. In this uh, new iteration of the software, it's purely a website that you go to. So there is nothing to install whatsoever. And because it's a website, every time you go there, you get the latest upgrades, and there are new features being added all the time. So again, a website, and because of that, it runs on pretty much anything that can connect to the internet. So if it can run an internet browser, you can use that to run Streamer. So uh, Chromebooks, absolutely fine uh, using iPads. Um, if you want a really low cost system, you could go to Amazon and buy one of their Kindles or what they call the Fire now, and you'd be able to run that absolutely fine using Streamer. We do not care at all what sort of CPU you have built into your computer or how much RAM you have or what operating system you're using. All we care is that you have the ability to run a browser and connect to the internet. Pretty simple. So again, no installs, runs on basically everything, and it supports a lot of languages. So if you're in a situation where you have a parent that would prefer to speak, say, Korean um, at an IEP meeting or just uh, come in and have a conversation, now you can do that. And it is multilingual translation. So we fully support something like the United Nations concept, where as you are speaking, there may be 20 people in the audience that each speak a different language. Each of those individuals will hear what you're saying in their language, and when they respond, everybody else is going to hear it in their preferred language. So we cover all sorts of aspects. And again, I want to emphasize this private and secure aspect because so much is coming out now on things like Microsoft, paying people to listen in on conversations, and they're using that data, selling it to third-party firms that then push advertising to your various uh, Facebook feeds and email threads and everything like that. When you get something for free, the businesses somehow are getting money off that, and the way they're doing that is they're selling your content to third-party advertisers and other firms. And, uh, I mean, everybody's kind of seen this. If you just talk about something on your Amazon Echo, all of a sudden you start getting all sorts of advertisements coming in about uh, that particular topic that you talked about. And it's very public. Um, it's, it's out there in all sorts of newspaper articles. So definitely if security and privacy is of any concern of your schools, which it probably is, uh, definitely you want to keep that security aspect in mind as you're choosing a system to use. Um, this is a real eye chart. Uh, but certainly we're appreciative of all the various communities and groups uh, that have gone out and evaluated the software and really liked it. Um, and in particular, uh, we received this award as the best education technology product of the year. So we think that's kind of cool. So uh, just kind of stepping on our soapbox there and uh, uh, saying that, yes, this is indeed a, uh, a real software application. So this is Streamer. Um, Stepping you through some of the very quick uh, aspects of it. Again, no install to do whatsoever. Um, there are no invite codes to send out, QR codes to scan, or anything like that. All you do is go to the website. Can't be much simpler than that. 
When you do that, you click on the microphone and it will start captioning your speech. You can have as many people as you want in the streamer room that you're using. And we'll get into what I mean by streamer room in a minute. But the point here is that if you're in a team teaching type situation, absolutely fine. We can support multiple speakers, multiple people that are speaking in a given situation, and they can be speaking at the same time. No which, problem whatsoever. Which means I can just break in and say something while Rob's talking. Yeah, exactly. And so what you see on the left side, let me uh, move my mouse here. And what you see is that when Karen started speaking, her name popped up here. So it's very easy for the student to realize who is speaking at any given moment, myself or Karen in this particular case. So yeah, thanks, Karen. Appreciate you jumping in like that. Um, so as you have been seeing in real time, it is contextual based captioning. So as we're saying words, the system is looking at the previously spoken words and words that are spoken shortly thereafter, and it uses that to generate this accurate uh, captioning. And then once the dynamic changing is done, what you see is fully punctuated uh, text. So this isn't just one long string of words or chopped up little individual sentences. What you see is entire paragraphs and sentences that are completely punctuated. All right, let me get back to these slides here. The software does identify the person that is speaking. Very important for a student with significant hearing loss. Um, you want to know who is saying what at any given time. And as I mentioned, we support multiple speakers. Something I haven't showed you yet is the ability to leave private messages for students or to send them private messages. So if you're in a classroom and you have, let's say, eight people, eight students that are listening or watching uh, the captioning, and one of them isn't paying attention, you could send them a private message. Um, very easy to do. Um, I guess I can do that right now. Jump over here. And so right there is an example. I guess that glossed over pretty quick. Let me do that one more time. And I'll click on the email. This is coming from another account. Oops, hang on. Do that one more time. Oh, it's not coming across. Oh, here we go. So that is an example of a private message coming across. Um, the point being that you could send a message to a student and say, hey, are you paying attention? Or is, uh, do you understand um, the concept? And the student can respond back to the teacher. So that way, instead of entering into the transcript, which everybody could see, you can have that private communication with, uh, with individual students. Particular cases, that can be a big deal. You can also send documents and attachments to students. Um, just drag and drop them into the transcript window, very simple to do. And we have some nice little features for students to be able to personalize their accounts. And that's more important than we first thought. Uh, the ability for a student to take some ownership and have it be a personalized system actually uh, is a significant element in acceptance of the accommodation. They can make it neat, make it uh, fit their personality. Lots of other things I'm gonna kind of gloss over here. Um, one that I do wanna show you though is the ability to download transcripts. And so when I come over here, um, we have this ability to download the transcript. I'll do that right now. And I can save it in a variety of different formats. So if I wanna save it as a Word doc, I could do that. I just did is downloaded that, and I'll save it to my desktop so I can find it a little bit easier here. There we go. And what I've just done there is created a, a Word document of the transcript of what I've been saying up till this point in time. And it'll just take a while for that to open, but I'll show it to you. And there we go. And so it's listing everything that people are saying in addition to uh, uh, listing who is saying that. So I hope you can see that. Let's get back over to the slides. So uh, 
lots of different features. The continuous voice synthesis, if you have a student who is nonverbal, they have the ability to be able to type sentences and have that be spoken aloud. So it gives them the ability to better participate in classroom conversations. They will see the captioning, and they're also able to speak aloud in a voice that's appropriate for them. So male, female, we can add accents to that voice if they want. Um, again, the idea of making this a very personalized system that better fits the student in their situation. The typical setup in a classroom is a teacher with a wireless microphone, and these days that tends to be an existing wireless FM system. So if you already have a wireless FM system, we're going to encourage you to use that. If you do not have one, we do have some that we recommend, and I'll cover those in a moment here, um, that are cheaper than going out and buying a brand new wireless FM system. But if you have one, go ahead and use it. The student will have some sort of device that can connect to the internet. And so that tends to be Chromebooks these days, but it could be an iPad or a laptop. What you will need then is a streamer subscription, and we'll get into pricing here in a moment. And again, any device that can connect to the internet that can use a Chrome browser. We tend to also like to have a USB port or if you're using an iPad, something like a lightning port um, in order to get better sound quality. We do not want to use the built-in microphone of the uh, device. Classrooms just tend to be a little too noisy to do that. So we want to use an external microphone, which tends to be a wireless microphone that the teacher is wearing. Pretty simple configuration. So this is what it looks like. And the point I want to emphasize is the student just blends in with the rest of the peers. They don't stand out as having some big bulky thing sitting on their desk or uh, all sorts of cables that they need to plug in or something like that. Um, in this particular case, Streamer is running on a Microsoft Surface Pro, but this could be whatever other students are using. It does not need to be a unique device that makes them look different. And depending on the student, that may be a huge deal in terms of their accepting the accommodation and using it, just that they blend in with the rest of the students. Getting into a little more detail, with each streamer subscription, this is what you get. So it's a little bit different than probably other subscriptions. You get a private streamer room and you get an admin account. You're going to use that admin account to create as many other accounts as you want. So you're going to create one for the student, and you may create one for teachers, basketball coach, parents, whatever it might be. You can create as many accounts as you want. Many times when you see what you're paying is per account, and that would get really expensive in a school system. So we don't do that. We let you create as many accounts as you want, and you then have the key to this room. You control which accounts can use the system, you know, who can see the captioning, and also what they can do in that room. Do you want to give them the ability to download the transcript, or would you just assume they not have that ability? You control that. So you have total control over everything that people can do within that room. So again, each streamer room, meaning each subscription that you apply for, is used for captioning and translating a single conversation. You can have as many people participating in that conversation as you want. Um, again, as many accounts as you want, but it is for a single conversation. So if you had two classrooms that each needed a streamer system and those classrooms were happening at the exact same time of the day, you would need two streamer subscriptions. So another way of thinking that is um, one streamer subscription per student that's going to carry this system through throughout the day. Or if you're over in Europe, I see we have some people uh, coming in from China, actually. Um, in Europe, it tends to be that they fit each room with a streamer room. So their thought process is we're going to equip the entire school with this accommodation versus provide it for an individual student. In Canada and America, uh, we have IEPs and we tend to give the accommodation to the student and they carry it from class to class. So for the majority of you, which again are in North America here, think of a subscription per student and the student will use that single subscription throughout the day. Each person using it can set their own viewing preferences. 
color layouts. Uh, for example, right now we have black text on a, a very light gray background, but we could change that around. We could have yellow text on a dark blue background, that sort of thing. Font size, lots that you can do. And again, nonverbal students are also supported. So whatever they type and enter is gonna be spoken out loud and some other features that are all built into this. So during the school day, um, again, I'm primarily talking about uh, North America here. The student will carry the tablet or the Chromebook or the iPad, whatever it is, and a wireless microphone to the room with them. That tends to be the typical deployment pattern. When they get into their physical classroom, they'll go to the streamer center, um, view the captioning. They're going to add notes during the transcript, during the uh, captioning, wherever desired. So say maybe this is important or I didn't understand this, ask the teacher afterwards. Um, they can do that as the transcription is being presented to them. They're going to save that transcript if you give them permission to do so, clear it and then go to the next classroom. Again, you control whether they have the ability to download that transcript. That's a setting that you have within Streamer. Certainly this software can be used in situations outside of the classroom. So by far, that's what we're focusing on in this particular webinar. But if, for example, you have an all school assembly, so let's say you have 500 students in a gymnasium and 18 of those students would like to see the captioning. Absolutely fantastic. So all 18 would be able to pull out their smartphone or their iPad or whatever it might be, and they will be able to view the captioning of what's happening in that assembly presentation. And again, since this is one conversation, you're gonna be able to do that with a single subscription. You're gonna support all 18 of those students with a single subscription. Same thing for captioning morning announcements. So now we have these 18 students that perhaps are in 18 different classrooms but each of them would be able to view a captioning of those morning announcements, again, sharing a single subscription. You could use this to combine uh, with Skype. Uh, we do that all the time here in our offices, um, all the time, uh, because we have a lot of development teams overseas, and uh, so we use uh, the software to caption what they're saying because I personally have difficulty understanding some of their accents, and so being able to have captioning of what they're saying, uh, even though they're speaking English, certainly helps me out. So again, this is done all the time in our offices, combining Streamer with Skype. Um, certainly also, if you have a population of non-English speaking students or English language learners. So in that type of environment, you could be speaking English and all the students that are in that classroom would be hearing what you're saying in their preferred language. So lots of other activities here that you can certainly use Streamer in order to support these students. I mentioned earlier, um, and I want to emphasize the point that if you already have a, an existing wireless FM system, your number one approach should be to use that. We strongly believe that if you have an accommodation that is being successfully used, you should continue using that accommodation. So we don't want to take that away from you. And so what you would do if you're using, uh, for example, a phone act system is that uh, with that, you would add a second receiver to that system that's going to connect up to the student's uh, Chromebook or whatever it might be. Um, we do offer a specialized cable. It's very inexpensive, and we strongly recommend you get that. So if you have a phone act system, spend the $4 or $5, whatever it is on Karen's website, to get that little cable. Um, it makes life simpler and it's well worth the roughly $5 that it costs. We also have a USB adapter that we recommend that you use. It's not required, but on some devices, particularly it tends to be Chromebooks manufactured by Samsung, uh, you do need that USB adapter. Again, not very expensive at all. And uh, so we'll go over some of that later on. But for a very small amount, you can be using that existing wireless FM system and have that uh, um, in place uh, for the student to caption. Um, lots of videos that Karen and her team have put together to help you with this software. And so the easiest way to find these is to go to YouTube and type in what I just listed there, the, those words. And we are going to get you a copy of these slides. So you don't need to be taking notes or something like that. We're going to send you an entire copy of each of these slides. 
but lots of really nice videos that are very short and concise. Um, so these quick tip videos are roughly 30 seconds long, maybe one minute long, but they're going to show you things like how to change the font size, how to create a desktop icon for your students. So instead of having to open Chrome, type in the website, and log in, now all they'll need to do is double click on that shortcut and it's going to bring them directly into their uh, streamer room. These are really nice user tips and very short, um, 30 seconds long, and well worth the 10 minutes of time that it would take you to view every one of them. So I strongly recommend that you do that. Um, and again, we'll send you copies of these slides. If you don't have your own wireless FM system, then here are two systems that we offer. Uh, the nano system, you can see the price shown there, and then the dual system. And I'll talk real quickly about these. I'm going to kind of go over uh, fast uh, so we can get to budget some other items. Um, you can see the price here. With these systems, you have three different choices of wireless options a headset, a handheld, or a lapel mic. Um, and so whatever your preference is, you can uh, mix and match any of those components with these systems. Uh, the nano system provides a single microphone input. So this could be your choice of either a headset or a handheld or a lapel mic. And with that system, then there's a very small receiver. It's a USB thumb drive size that plugs into the student's computer, so very easy to put in a pocket, that sort of thing. And uh, with that, you're going to be able to uh, uh, caption what's being said. Also with the nano receiver recently added is a monitor port. So now we're able to plug into that monitor port and be able to use that to connect to the student's uh, hearing aid or CI. You'd need a streamer device, something like a Compilot, in order to do that. So again, very small in size. Um, the receiver um, on the left side here, the USB, it just plugs it directly into the port. So quite compact, very easy to use. The dual microphone system, as the name implies, supports two microphone inputs. So you could have, for example, a lapel mic and a handheld mic. The teacher may be wearing the lapel mic and the students in a small session, uh, you know, maybe five students sitting uh, around a, a desk having a conversation could use the handheld mic. And so again, it supports two microphone inputs and it also has the two audio outputs as well. Um, the dual microphone, the receiver is a little bit bigger. It's the size of a business card. So we're still not talking about something um, that you'd have to carry in a separate case or something like that. You could certainly fit this into a student's pocket. By the way, this uh, belt pack transmitter, that's about the size of a deck of cards. So trying to give you some uh, perspective in terms of the size of these devices. And again, I'm going kind of quick through this, uh, but definitely if you uh, need information on the wireless microphones, we're happy to provide that for you. Also with the dual microphone, we have a bracket where the student can attach that to their smartphone. So this ends up being a really nice, compact wireless system where they can use anywhere. Um, they can hand that lapel mic to the person speaking and they can clip it on and the student then would be able to view the captioning. And so this could be done you know, anywhere uh, at the football field or something like this. So a very nice, compact wireless FM system that could be used anywhere uh, at any time. So uh, kind of a nice feature to have. All right, let's see. Let's get to the important things, uh, the budget. Total cost to your system, and again, uh, we're gonna get you to that free um, demonstration here in a moment. But with your system, what you're gonna have is first of all, your subscription. So currently, this school year's pricing, what you can do is purchase an unlimited use, completely shareable subscription for $795 for the first year, and thereafter it will be $199 per year. That comes out to $16.58 a month, so quite affordable. And so again, this is an option that we're offering this school year, so through, I guess, June 30th of this year, and then the pricing is going to change. With that subscription, by default, you can create up to 100 uh, streamer accounts. If you need more, contact us, and we will increase your limit. We just put a cap on there so we wouldn't have some spammer 
going out and create 10 million accounts and try and overload our system. Um, so by default, you can create 100 accounts, but we're happy to increase your limit if you need to do that. Now, we're certainly going to be changing pricing next year, and so we do want to give you the opportunity um, to uh, use, the, you know, take advantage of the current pricing. Uh, pricings will be increasing. So any purchase made now, we're going to give you a subscription through June 30th of 2020. So whatever that is, you know, 15 months from now. So instead of a single year, what you're getting is a subscription that's going to last through June 30th of 2020. So that's going to easily carry you through all of next school year. And again, that's for any purchase that's made through uh, Karen's site, through her website, um, of a streamer subscription that's made between now and uh, that June 30th cutoff. So that gives you some time, uh, but certainly we do want you to consider doing that um, because over and over again, what happens come September is we get all these requests and we're just hammered with everybody wanting support at the same time. So we would really encourage you to set up your systems now versus wait until September. And the same applies for educators. My wife's a speech pathologist and certainly in September, she is just hammered with all the new students coming in, uh, new IEPs, new uh, uh, tests to give, uh, new parents to meet. Um, her schedule in September is just incredibly busy. And so uh, if you can set things up in advance um, now versus wait till next year, we certainly encourage you to do that. Um, the microphone, if you need to purchase one, you can see the prices there. And the computer or tablet, if you need to purchase one, you can spend as little as $49 if you want buying that tablet from Amazon. Um, if you already are using Chromebooks or iPads or whatever it might be in your school district, go ahead and use those. Um, you're certainly encouraged to do that. As we mentioned earlier, we do also encourage trials. Um, you know, the software is very affordable. You know, that $16.58 a month uh, for subsequent years. Um, but we do still like a trial. We want to make sure it's a good fit for the student. Any person that claims they have the perfect solution for every student out there doesn't know what they're talking about. Every situation is unique. Every student is unique. Um, so we want you to uh, do a trial first. There's no real downside to doing a trial. Um, cost $99. It is the full version. So again, a lot of software firms, when they give you a trial, uh, they give you a limited version and then you end up having to buy all these add-ons um, and different features and different aspects. In this case, it's the full trial, um, so we, we don't limit you at all. Um, to do that, you're going to go to the website and uh, we'll show you that. Why don't we show that right now? So Karen, let me pull this website over. And here is Karen's website. And I'm going to change the font size or the sizing a little bit. Oops. Sounds good to me. Got to manage my windows here. What <laughs> happened to the streamer window? Did I close out a streamer? Uh -oh. let, me, uh, let me reopen it here. Okay, I must have hit X instead. Oh, no, there it is. I'm sorry. Okay, I got to separate these tabs. And make this one a little bit bigger. Okay, so now we're back. Yeah, All go right. ahead and why don't you take us through the website, Karen, and show us a little bit. I will do that. Uh, if you haven't been on the Supporting Success website, please just sign on to Success for Kids with Hearing Loss.com. You can see it in the URL. And what we're most interested in, you can find under products. So if you go under products, you can see right here, Interact Streamer Automated Captioning. And we have a number of different pages under Streamer. And they are there for, uh, to help you understand candidacy. It talks a little bit about the trial period, ideas for assessing the benefit. But for most people, they really want to see the um, purchasing page because that kind of lays out what what they're going to have to prove to their uh, their administrators, what, what they're going to have to show. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time here with the streamer in the bottom. 
Can you help me out, Rob? Probably not. There it is, purchasing. Da, 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 da. It's easier to deal with on the website when you don't have it cut off like this. But so the purchasing page has all of the information you need about purchasing Interact AS through supporting success. You'll see that you'll see that it talks about the subscriptions and uh, you can certainly do a purchase order. We welcome purchase orders. We do them all the time. The trial periods that Rob talked about do cost $99 for 30 days to try the software. If you want to rent one of our microphones, if for example, you don't have a, an FM microphone available for your use at the time you want to do the trial, then you can rent one of our microphones. And for that, you would, um, when you send in your purchase order, it would be for, in this case, with the dual microphone, you would send in $599 and be invoiced for that. But if at the end of the 90 days, you find that, no, you know, this just isn't a good fit for the student, or maybe it'll be good again, not next year, but the year after, and we'll try it again then. Um, you, re you return the microphone within 45 days, am I right? 60 days, I think, of the day that you got it. Am I right, Rob, 60? I believe it is. 60 days of the day that you received the microphone, and then... Yeah, there's, there's a lot of flexibility there, so... Uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, typically uh, it's supposed to be 30 days, but uh, if you want to keep it longer, that's fine. Just your return deposit gets uh, nicked a little bit, but uh, we'll work with you on that. Yep. Um, if you, you know, right now a lot of schools, for example, are going through testing, and you're not going to introduce a new accommodation to a student during the middle of a testing program, and we understand that. So you don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out what's your optimum 30 days that you're going to use the system. If you have spring break or vacation or testing or something like that, we understand that and we'll work with you on making sure that you get a full 30 days to use the system in a classroom. Correct. So if at that point you've decided it's not a good fit, you can return the microphone and get your deposit back or this rental fee back. So again, we have the dual wireless microphone that where you could use two microphones or the nano, which is the USB drive where it would just be the teacher mic being used. Um, you can do just the trial period alone with your own existing FM or DM microphone, but you need to consider all of these uh, specific points. We always have to have a microphone that is placed close to the teacher's mouth. Um, it would be really nice if the child could just use the Chromebook on his desk and not have to give the teacher the microphone. That would be great from a social point of view and kids would really appreciate that. However, it's just not going to provide the accuracy of the captioning that you absolutely need in a classroom setting. So to get that captioning accuracy, that teacher needs to be wearing a microphone and it needs to be a decent quality microphone. So again, uh, we do um, either take uh, purchase orders or you can make these purchases on the website just by clicking the add to cart, the streamer, um, subscription like Rob said if you buy it now it will go through June 30th of 2020 so that's pretty amazing and uh, then you would then thereafter pay $199 per year now this is not going to this this particular um, deal I guess with $199 ad infinitum is not going to continue very much longer it's going to go to a, a pure annual subscription basis um, with a flat amount for every year but it's what it is now and so we're excited about that you can buy the microphones by themselves if you find yourself in a situation where you just want to have a microphone backup and uh, you would like to then have this, um, we, we would certainly provide that to you. Again, if you have already have an FMDM system microphone, then you can make that work for this captioning for that student's accommodation. That's great. If not, we do have this backup.
So uh, you can get the teacher headsets by themselves. They do like to have their own headsets when it's this kind of a behind the ear configuration. Um, you can get 25, 20 percent off if you buy five. Um, same thing. It doesn't matter what the microphone is. Rob talked about this little audio cable right here is the, the, the magic cable <laughs> to go with the FM systems that just makes it so much easier. And there are some cases when the audio cable will also be needed. And I wanted to draw your attention to Mike Messini. Mike works for Supporting Success and he is a fabulous resource for you. He is our uh, consultant that works with school districts and provides lots of information about questions. So if you have questions about, gee, do I need to have this, this cable or that cable, or I have this kind of an FM, what do we need to do in my situation and that sort of thing, Mike's a great guy to send an email to for these, these general let's get going kinds of things. So let me uh, pull up the uh, contact information that for Mike here. Perfect um, timing. That. Yeah. Um, let's see. And some other information. Again, you're going to get uh, these slides, so you don't need to uh, write all these down. Um, but let's uh, jump into this one before I forget. Um, because I promised you that you would have a way to do this for free, and uh, we're kind of running out of time, and then I'll show you all the, the uh, uh, contact information. But in order to try this for free today or right now as you're listening to this presentation, uh, you're more than welcome to uh, go to uh, the streamer site there and log in using the account and the password that is shown. Um, when you do that, you'll see a couple rooms. Uh, one is demo, and that's a very open public room that a lot of people use a lot of time. Uh, we set up one specially just for you uh, called Demo for Schools. So I encourage you to click on that room instead. You see some traffic there. Now, again, everybody that's watching this webinar has this account information, but in real life, when you do a trial, you will get a private and secure room that you'll be using. So instead of this uh, public room. And so very much privacy, security is built into the system. All you'll do is uh, head, um, type in or click on the microphone and start talking. And again, just emphasizing, this is not a room that you want to use in actual classroom activities um, because other people have the account because we've just shared it to the world. Um, but uh, with your trial, you will indeed get a very much secure room. Another item, um, I've seen some questions or some comments coming across here from multiple people asking about uh, conferences, uh, us presenting at conferences and supporting conferences. Um, and so thanks for those comments. Uh, certainly, if you are hosting a conference, um, we are there to help you. And so we will set it up so that you can use Streamer for free to caption all your sessions. And uh, very simple to do. Um, we'll be able to make that happen for you. So uh, we can do that without any problem. Here then is that uh, promised uh, contact information. And uh, Karen, I think we've got most of the questions answered. Um, the ones that uh, are a little more specialized, I'll stay around afterwards and I'll type uh, answers to you. So if you asked a very specific question, stick around and I'll make sure that gets answered. Uh, Karen, why don't you uh, wrap it up for us? I'd be happy to. And uh, I so appreciate everyone who is online here listening to our webinar. And I welcome you to send me an email. You can see my email address there, karen at successforkidswhl.com. And just put in the subject line CEU or um, CEU certificate, something like that. You don't have to send me a long email. And I will send you a certificate that reflects 60 minutes of your time learning about Streamer as a captioning option. I, the only thing I request is that all of the, re, the, the requests for the certificates get to me by noon on 
Thursday, no, on Friday, by noon on Friday. So all tomorrow up to noon on Friday, I will accept those requests and I will turn around and make sure that you have your CEU certificate no later than Monday noon. I'm not going to honor any requests after that. So if you need that certificate, I'd be happy to send you one. So thanks so much for uh, all your attention. If you have uh, questions beyond what you've written in the chat box and want to share the slides or whatnot, um, they are going to be sent out to you tomorrow. Mike Messini is going to be sending a follow-up email that you'll probably get by uh, tomorrow afternoon, maybe Friday morning. And uh, so you'll already have his email right then and you can uh, write him questions, email him questions. and, and uh, We'd be happy to help you further understand this. Absolutely give the demo room a try, um, show it to parents, uh, play around with it, and uh, even with just playing around with it with your computer uh, microphone alone, just for this playing around situation, hopefully you'll see the power of streamer captioning. So thanks again, everyone. Happy spring, and I hope everybody has a smooth end to the school year here in North America. Take care now. Bye-bye.